Good evening. Can I start by wishing everyone a very happy Christmas? It wouldn't be 2020 if we didn't spend Christmas talking about Brexit. And before I go any further, can I pay tribute to all those key workers, including our NHS staff and our armed forces, who'll be working on the front line over the coming days? Throughout this pandemic, you've represented the very best of Britain, and our whole nation owes you a massive debt. Thank you. As leader of the Labour Party, I have urged the government to get on with the negotiating and get the deal that it promised. I wanted the talks to succeed. I did so because a deal is in the national interest. Businesses need a deal. Working people need a deal. Families need a deal. The fact that the government was even considering no deal during a global pandemic was grossly irresponsible. And after months of negotiation, a deal has now been agreed. The choice facing Parliament, the choice facing Labour, is now whether to accept that deal or to reject it. The deal is a thin agreement. It does not provide adequate protections for British manufacturing, our financial services, creative industries or workplace rights. It is not the deal that the government promised. Far from it. And there are serious questions about the government's preparedness for the new arrangements. As ever, leaving everything to the last minute has made it even more difficult for businesses to be ready. A better deal could have been negotiated. But I accept that that option, that option has now gone. The chance for renegotiation is over. There are just two paths now left for our country. To move forward with a deal or without one. No deal is simply not an option. The social, economic and political consequences would be devastating. Jobs would be put at risk. Businesses would collapse. Investment would dry up. Our national security would be threatened. The disruption that we've seen at the port of Dover in recent days would be the tip of the iceberg. And the cumulative effect on top of the worst recession of any major economy would be unimaginable. Labour is against no deal, firmly and absolutely. And the British people would never forgive us if we enabled a no deal outcome. There are some that argue that Labour should be neutral on this issue, to abstain. I do not agree. Leadership is about taking the tough decisions in the national interest. It's about being a serious, responsible opposition, a government in waiting. This is the deal that Labour will inherit in 2024. It's something we will build on compared to the chaos of no deal. The public would expect a Labour government to make it work. And the EU would expect us to make it work and to use it to protect our shared interests, including, of course, the peace process in Northern Ireland. At a moment of such national significance, it is just not credible for Labour to be on the sidelines. And that's why I can say today that when this deal comes before Parliament, Labour will accept it and vote for it. But let me be absolutely clear and say directly to the government, up against no deal, we accept this deal, but the consequences of it are yours and yours alone. And we will hold you to account for it every second you're in power, for the promises that you made, for the promises you break. No longer can you blame somebody else. Responsibility for this deal lay squarely at the door of number 10.
I want to address the British people directly. I know how tired you are of Brexit. The endless negotiations, political squabbles. You want to move on. You want politicians in Westminster talking about the things that matter to you and your family. Securing our economy, protecting our NHS and rebuilding our country. Those are my priorities. We're a great country. We've done extraordinary things. Our NHS is the envy of the world. British scientists were amongst the first to discover a vaccine for coronavirus. I want to be Prime Minister because I believe a better future is possible for our country. That we can be even greater than we are today. That we can achieve so much more. That we can stand proud on the world stage and that we can make Britain the best place to grow up in and the best place to grow old in. That is the change I believe in. That is the change I want. And with Labour under new leadership, that is the change that we offer. Thank you. And I think we'll now go to questions from the media. I think we've got Nick Erdley from the BBC. Nick. Shakir, can you tell voters whether you think they will be better off or worse off as a result of the terms negotiated by the government? And you've said this is a thin deal. What specifically would you like to be different? Um, Nick, look, the choice is a no deal or this deal, and we will certainly be better off with this deal, and we have to make it work. Um, no deal would have terrible consequences for our country and, and the Labour Party could not enable that to happen. Um, so we have to make a success of this. We have to make it work. And it is far better than um, no deal. On the thinness of the deal, I mean, there are many areas where it doesn't deliver on the promise that the government um, made, um, most obviously in relation to services and the equivalence provisions, uh, which are very, very thin. And services, of course, are 80 percent of our uh, economy. But um, we are at a fork in the road. There are days left. And the choice is either this deal or no deal. And this deal is in the national interest. Thank you, Nick. And happy Christmas. Uh, I think we're going to Dan Hewitt at ITV next. Dan. Um, Sakir, you've said clearly you don't like this deal, but you're going to vote for it anyway. If you were to win the next election, would you go back to the European Union and try and negotiate a different one? And secondly, you just said that abstaining here is not an option that people would expect more from Labour. Do you now accept that when you abstained on crucial coronavirus legislation earlier this year that you made a mistake? Um, Dan, on the deal and building on it, I'm clear that an incoming Labour government in 2024 would inherit this deal. And therefore, we have to make this deal work. It's what the public, public would expect of an incoming Labour government. It's what the EU would um, expect. Of course, we'd want to improve on it, um, but we would have to operate to this deal. And, and uh, it's very important um, that we are in a position to say we go into that election building on this um, deal. On the question of the... Um, tiered um, arrangement. Um, we didn't um, support the government on the coronavirus tiering arrangement because, and I said this directly to the Prime Minister at the time, I didn't think the tiered system he was putting in place was strong enough to hold the virus. I specifically pointed to him that I didn't think tier two would be strong enough. He pushed that away as he always did, only um, a number of days later uh, to accept that the tiered system isn't um, working. So I think the question there is really for the Prime Minister rather than for me. Dan, thank you very much. And again, happy Christmas. Can I go to Sam Coates at Sky? Sam. Uh, Sakir, you're backing a Brexit deal from the Prime Minister. Can you just spell out to the country what you think the benefits of Brexit are? The, um, we are we've left the EU. And therefore, we have to make a future outside the EU. We've now got a base upon which to build. And that is a very, very good thing. And I think the relief across the business communities and communities generally today will be huge. We've all seen this building up over the last few weeks and months, if not um, years. So we must now go forward and we have to make a success 
um, of this. Um, and, um, you know, we'll hold the government to account, um, as I say, every, every day, every week, every month, in, every year into the next general election. Uh, but we, the Labour Party, will inherit this deal at the next general election if we win it. And that's what I'm absolutely determined to do. Thank you, Sam. And I think finally today we've got Sean Connolly from PA. Um, Sakir, um, you've, you've always been a very pro-European, pro-EU leader throughout your whole career. So um, to actually vote for this deal, that which you call thin, um, rather than abstain and let it go through or vote against it, doesn't that, isn't that an act of political cowardice and, and political opportunism because you're so shaken by the loss of the Red Wall in the last general election? No, Sean, it's completely the opposite. These are difficult and tough decisions. But in the end, there is only really one choice, a binary choice here. Um, either we support the deal um, or we support the alternative, which is no deal. And we've always been against no deal. Um, and that is why we will vote for this deal. And I think that many people will see this as a tough but necessary um, decision on behalf of the Labour Party, the Labour movement, and on behalf of our country. Thank you very much, Sean, and, and again to you, have a happy Christmas. Thank you very much.